Welcome back to our video module on dynamics. Today we're going to take a look at some new material and I'd like to take a look down the road to see where we're going before we get started. So I want to imagine that uh, I'm fixing some complex machine to the ground and it somehow moves to some remote component. Maybe that somehow is some sort of spring that moves around in two dimensions or maybe it's some sort of um, some sort of slider you know so it it, uh, it has constrained motion or maybe it's um, maybe it's some sort of parallelogram where we now have some sort of controlled motion through these pivots we don't really know but we know that it connects to this box over here and inside that box is some particle and it's moving around maybe some velocity and some acceleration. And if I'm in the box, I can describe what's going on. Either it's this particle's position, it's velocity or acceleration. If I'm, if I'm just in the box, I don't see what's going on. But we don't want to know just what's happening from the perspective of someone in this box. We want to know what's happening with this particle if you are standing on the stationary frame. This problem can involve all sorts of skills. So let's start off with a really basic one today. I want to imagine you're over at a playground and on this playground is a, uh, is a merry-go-round. That merry-go-round is set up in such a way that, um, you know, maybe it's rotating around and, and you're sitting on it and there's this little mark on the mark right here and you have a friend and that friend is standing on the ground. And you're going to describe the location of that mark to your friend. But unfortunately to your friend, it doesn't make a lot of sense because your friend sees that your vision of the location of this mark and his vision of the location of this mark are different. So your friend has a coordinate frame. This is the fixed coordinate frame, X and Y. And you, you're sitting on the merry-go-round. Your coordinate frame is skewed. Your coordinate frame is skewed like this, and we'll call it y prime and x prime. And to you, the location of this mark, you're on the merry-go-round, the location of this mark is x prime, y prime. But to your friend, it looks different because your coordinate frame is rotated through some angle theta. So your friend needs a way to interpret your posi the position you give him in terms of his fixed frame. All right, so let's blow this up a little bit so we can take a closer look. We'll start with our stationary coordinate frame, which for that we're using the axes X and Y, and we'll add our rotated coordinate frame. That's going to be X prime and Y prime. That's the coordinate frame that the person on the merry-go-round is gonna see. We're going to have a point right here, and that point has some coordinate, x prime, y prime. And in addition, that's in the rotated coordinate frame, and that one's fairly easy to describe. And we're trying to find what the coordinates of the point are in the x, y coordinate frame. We should also point out that there's some known angle theta between the two. So the first thing we may want to figure out is we want to know what is the x coordinate. And a good way to do that is let's first look at the x prime influence on the x coordinate. And that is going to be whatever the x prime um, value is times cosine of theta. Plus, you're going to have some influence due to what's happening in the y direction as well. That's going to be a minus sine theta times y prime. And in this way, we can find out what the x-coordinate is. In a similar way, we could also find out what the y-coordinate is. That's going to be y equals cosine theta y prime plus sine theta x prime. In all likelihood, you've seen this transformation before. However, today we'd like to take a slightly more elegant view of what we have. To many of you, this should remind you of what we covered when we looked at polar coordinates. And that is because in both cases, we have a rotating coordinate frame or a coordinate frame that can rotate or is rotating. 
However, in this case, the coordinate frame is not fundamentally defined by the position of the particle. Nonetheless, we will see some of the same complications arise as we try to identify velocity and acceleration in a rotating coordinate frame. Let's erase some things here, get some space. We have a lot of information in this equation. One way to use a lot of information is to put it into a matrix form. And if we do that, we can rewrite these two equations as x, y, c theta minus sine theta, sine theta, cosine theta, times x prime, y prime. Let's try and understand this. We see x right here is equal to cosine theta, x prime, cosine theta, x prime, minus sine theta, y prime minus sine theta y prime. So we see it's true in this particular case and if we take a step back we realize that this matrix right here is really general. It allows us to understand the relationship between a rotated reference frame, which is what the red reference frame is, and a stationary reference frame. This is known as the rotation matrix. And of course it can be done in three dimension as well. A good way to uh, write it is we know that the position in the xy coordinate frame equals the rotation matrix times the position in the uh, primed coordinate frame, x prime, y prime coordinate frame. I hope today's explanation of the rotation matrix has given you a fundamental knowledge of what it is as well as an intuitive grasp of what it means whenever we're comparing rotated coordinate frames with stationary coordinate frames.